In this video, we're gonna test this M1 chip against my old 2015 MacBook Pro. Ever since I got the Sony a7S III, my MacBook from 2015 has been struggling a good bit, still getting the work done, but struggling. Got my hands on a MacBook Air with eight gigabytes of RAM, 512 gigabyte SSD. There's basically three tests that I wanna run here. The first one is, how much more quickly can I edit on this? Second one is, how much more quickly does this render a short video? And then the third one is, how much more quickly does this render a long video versus this? Let's get into it. Opening up Final Cut is extremely fast. <laughs> Done, minute and 30 seconds edited in 12 minutes. I have to say, this being the eight gigabyte model, the 120 FPS did not scrub like it needs to scrub. Like the way you pick clips is you scrub to the beginning, you scrub to the middle, you see where you want it to start, you hit your end point. This, you can't do that, it's jumping all around. So, uh, you know, strike one for 120 frames per second, you would have to make proxies on this too to really be able to handle it the way that you handle any other footage. I talked a lot about this with Patrick Tommaso and he's saying, yeah, that's the 16 gigabytes. Like that's the difference between eight gigabytes of RAM and 16. Oh yeah, and better performance, it's crazy. Woo. Seamless, flawless. There was like one little time when I was scrubbing on just a regular 24 frame per second clip that it jumped a little bit. But other than that, everything felt great. All right, let's do the same exact thing on this computer. So like 120 frames per second is editable on this without creating proxies. It's actually impossible to edit without creating proxies on this. So right now I'm gonna create proxies for only my 120 frames per second footage. That's what's happening right now. So since I decided that you do actually need to proxy 120 frames per second on this to make it edit seamless, I'm gonna have these both race now, uh, proxying these these clips. As expected, the MacBook Air with the M1 chip was able to render these 20 files in five minutes and 10 seconds, whereas it took my 2015 MacBook Pro 23 minutes and 16 seconds to do the same task. As I've already mentioned, if you get the 16 gigabyte RAM version, you're not gonna have to even create proxies at all. But if you wanna save the money or whatever, the fact that it can create proxies almost five times faster, that's obviously a bonus. All right. Done, 39, 41, so 12 minutes. <laughs> 12 minutes, which was exactly how long it took me to edit on this one. Interesting. Much smoother on the M1, very doable as long as you have proxies, which do take a long time on the 2015 MacBook Pro. Okay, rendering out a minute and 20 second video on each machine, race. The Air did it in a minute and 26 seconds and the old MacBook Pro did it in two minutes and 47 seconds. Okay, rendering out a 17 minute video on each machine, race. Slight correction, the video that I'm rendering out here is actually 18 minutes long, but the Air did it in 13 minutes and 10 seconds while the MacBook Pro from 2015 did it in 18 minutes and 59 seconds. Main takeaways here, yes, obviously this computer performed better than this computer. We all knew that that was the case. The question was, is it enough of an upgrade to go from this to that? As is always the case, it comes down to what do you want it for? But if you're an editor and you make videos for YouTube or you make video client work, whatever, whatever you're doing, as you would imagine, you should probably opt for the MacBook Pro with the M1 chip as opposed to the MacBook Air um, and get the 16 gigabytes. Even if you do go MacBook Air, just if you like the form factor or whatever better, still get the 16 gigabyte version of RAM because uh, yeah, I think that that I think that that's making a pretty big difference here. I do indeed have the 16 gigabyte RAM, 512 gigabyte MacBook Pro M1 chip on order from the Apple Store. It'll be here on December 23rd. Be sure you subscribe so you can see that test. Uh, as long as you like, you know, making vids and stuff. That's kind of what I do. All right, see you later.